Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan, and uh, Alex is probably asleep. Uh, which, you know, I understand that is his normal state of being. But luckily, I am not alone today. Uh, I'm very happy to welcome to the show Captain Sugar Bear himself. Brian, thank you for being on. Thanks for having me. It's It's been too long talking about it, and now we're finally doing it, and I'm excited. Yes, it feels like, uh, you know, like every year or so, we would end up, like, just meeting at some point on Twitter or one of those platforms and commiserating for five seconds, and then kind of like going, oh, we should do a thing at some point. The last uh, time that we really spoke, uh, you were really excited about a guest on your podcast, and I was really excited about a guest on my podcast, and we were like, oh my god, can you believe it? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think I think we were having that conversation. So I imagine that would have had to have been the Dan Reichert episode of my show, because that was the most excited I think I've ever been. I don't remember which one I was freaking out about. <laughs> I had I had a few big ones that were right in the row. It might have been Rudy Rutenberg, it might have been Satine Phoenix, or it might have been Matt Leacock. Those were like like batting three in a row. So I was probably just like totally out straight oh yeah and then all three all three of those people are totally worth freaking out about absolutely yes they certainly are um and um yeah those were great too i had like matt leacock on my uh wish list like from the time that we actually started this show four or five years ago it's one of those weird things you don't really want to cold contact anybody because you're like uh oh, they don't know me from anybody this is this is stupid and I was like, yeah, uh, hey, creator of Pandemic, would you like to come <laughs> on the show and talk about like how cooperative gaming mechanics were? And he responds back, hey, yeah, I'd love to come on your show. When would you like? <laughs> and like that was easier than I thought. And you just hit on it right there. And it's, it's one of the first lessons I learned about having guests on yeah. was you're never going to have someone on if you wait for them to come to you. Because right. it, it's a crowded space. There's a ton of podcasts. I mean, what's going to make your show the one that they reach out and be like, hey, I love what you're doing. Let me be on your show. So it really does come down to cold contacting. And I know this is a weird tangent, like already off the bat, but it's fine. It's something that I, I, I talk a lot about on Twitter because there's so many people who, you know, are working on content and they're like, I am so nervous to ask somebody to be on my show. And in fact, I mm -hmm. think that's how we ended up getting on contact again about doing this was right. from that tweet, if I recall. Yeah, because at a certain point, I think you, yeah, you'd send something out, and you're like, a lot of people uh, think that I'm not really approachable, but I like to go on people's things, so you know, you could always contact me. And I'm like, oh wait, I think I actually have a DM thread with him. We should probably get <laughs> back to that. We did talk about it some, at some point. No, I, I totally understand that because uh, Satin Phoenix was like the same thing for me. I contact, and it's like. I know you're really busy, but I was just thinking, like, if you might want to, and her response back was like, I would love to come on your show. Oh, and if you talk about mechanics, Rudy does mechanics for uh, Maze Arcana. I'll get you in touch with him. Somehow I hit two birds with one stone on that, and I still don't really even understand it. So go pursue your dreams, folks. That right there is the point, and that, that was going to be uh, kind of you know, what I was going to say is that, sure. you know, same thing with, with Dan Reichert, you know, yeah. here's this person who I've listened to hundreds of hours of his content. Yeah. And one day I saw he was posting on Twitter at the time. And that's the thing with the people who are more popular, uh, just to keep in mind, mm. is wait to send them a message when they've just recently tweeted, because that means they're probably still looking at responses at the moment. Oh, that's the best way okay. for them to actually see you ask something, because a lot of times they don't even know you want them on the show because they, you know, if they're super popular, then they, you know, get uh, too many tweets at them. But, yes. you know, it all kind of lined up. And I said, hey, I've got this show. Would you be interested in coming on? And like two minutes later, I had a, a response. Yeah, DM me the details, you know, and <laughs> and sure. I'm like, J okay. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, OK, I guess we're you know, doing this now. <laughs> it's it's the same thing for uh, a thing I recently did that nobody knows about yet. Well, okay, Ooh. a very small handful of people know that I did was I recently went up to Santa Monica to record an episode of Fireside Chats with Colin Moriarty, Ooh. Of, uh, formerly of IGN, currently, of, or and kind of funny, and currently of Colin's Last Stand. All I did was send him a message be like, hey, I'd love to come on your show and talk to you about something. Yeah. And he said, sure, let's talk about it. So mm. you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. 
reach for your dreams every so often. You know, if you, even if you're shooting for Pluto every so often, even if you fall short, you'll still grab Saturn or something. And it's yeah. great. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, you should always aim for Pluto. That's actually like I my whole uh, young life was basically trying to convince people I was from Pluto and doing a fairly good job. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like that was my claim to fame. Like when I was four or five, people would be like, hey, Ed, how, how could you possibly live on Pluto? It's easy. We live inside the planet. It's warmer there. And for some reason, adults were like, somehow that actually makes sense. I don't know why you know that. <laughs> yep, I'm just going to go with it. Oh, I freaked people out. It was awesome. Either I try to get in contact with people, or we've also had some wonderful guests that just contact us directly because they're familiar with the show. Or And then we had a few cases where, um, I think it was actually Alex at that point, was talking to somebody who was like, oh, this seems like a really cool thing. Let's see if they want to come on. Yeah, we're going to get like Jeremy Holcomb and, and Jeff Tidball on the show. And I'm like, oh, okay. They, they were creating the white box, and that was going out to Kickstarter. And he really, he backed it, he liked it, and he said, hey, it would be great if we had them come on. Because it was about a whole suite of things uh, that help with game design. And I was like, oh, that sounds pretty good. I should probably look up some information about them. And so it turns out that, like, Jeff Tidball's, like, the CEO of Atlas. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like, like, I started to, I, I was like, Alex... Did you know that he, like, worked on Warhammer? You're aware of this, right? And he's like, no, I did not know that, Nathan. You should probably look up his bio. He said some impressive work he's already done. Oh, and all of a sudden there's this dawning realization. Oh, I caught a way bigger fish than I thought I was going for. I guess this basically just became podcasting tips at a certain point, but we're <laughs> but that's, that's perfectly fine. I did want to mention, like, uh, you have kind of become synonymous with, like, tabletop gaming at this point. Would you say that that's really what you're mostly well known for? Uh, it's kind of funny you say that because I, so one of the things when I was talking with Colin was, uh, he was asking me all the different things I do. And I told mm -hmm. him all the different things I do. He said, wow, you sound pretty spread thin. You might want to consolidate. And I thought, <laughs> huh, that's actually a pretty good idea. You're right. I am awful at this. He's like, mm -hmm. well, I'm not trying to say that. I'm like, no, it's fine. You're right. Like, you're absolutely right. Like, that's <laughs> correct. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I literally just put out a tweet today saying, what do you people know me for? Like, you know, I've got over 4,000 followers. Why are you following me? Like, what is what content that I produce or put out or, or work on is what has drawn you in? Mm -hmm. And uh, I can yeah. only think of, th you know, three main threads. So the last one I just put, uh, the cut of my jib being, you know, just as a person like the shit I should I tweet about the random bullshit I tweet about. <laughs> right. And uh, that was right. the winning answer or it, it is so far by like a wide margin. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what I'm synonymous with anymore. Yeah. I guess just being me, which is weird. And I don't know what that means exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that probably T TTRPGs. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, guess. I, don't know. I, I do like the idea that cut of your jib is exactly what you're well known for because it doesn't necessarily inform what you're supposed to be doing, but it does make you feel at least a little bit good about yourself. Right? Like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice. Don't, no, don't get me wrong. Like, I appreciate that. I'm glad people like me. That's fantastic. Doesn't really tell me what I should focus on, but I guess if if I'm gonna focus on something, the very very distant second place was TTRPGs. Okay. So, <laughs> well, and when I say distant, I mean by like two of the answers had three percent, that had like twenty percent, and the rest of it was all in the cut of my jib. So that's right. how distant. So gotcha. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna go with that. We'll go with that. My uh my whole thing was mostly that like I I just like throw a ton of stuff at the wall and see if anything sticks. And if it does, great. And if not, all right, I'll just move on to the next thing. Well, that was exactly my plan, too. That's yeah. exactly why I, I dip my finger in so many pots is right. figure out which pot was the best pot. Yes, it's the pot that's just right. It's not yeah. too hot, not too cold. Yeah, I, it, I'm the worst yeah. Goldilocks because I still haven't figured that shit out. So. <laughs> Don't feel bad. I'm still, I, it, no matter how many projects I come up with to work on, I will find three more to do. <laughs> Even if I can't, we're in the same boat on that topic. The struggle is so real. This, oh boy, the struggle of having ideas and then thinking that you could actually implement them. Whew! Yeah. I personally think I know you best uh, for, for TTRPGs, for like Soul Bear, uh, for, you know, like the work that you've been doing for Taldere and, and Threads of Fate. 
do you feel like that's like your main thing? Like it, despite the despite the polling and everything, you personally, do you feel like you are known in that capacity? I I'll, I'll say I I guess probably it's it's what I talk most about when I'm not talking about how the curry I ate last night really hurt my tummy. <laughs> also a good topic. The curry is very important. Yeah, well, it's not been a great day for that. Yeah. So. Mm, yeah. But it's so good. It's good, but yeah, you pay for it later. Still paying for it. Was paying for it a half hour before we started. <laughs> then it's probably good we started when we did. Uh, <laughs> that, that would have been a really awkward conversation to have. What do you like? Uh, about role playing games, the role play, honestly, um, okay. out out of everything, like the mechanics are are awesome. Like the combat is cool. I like how strategic it is. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it's the stories that we tell together that really is what draws me in. Yes, when we usually end up talking about mechanics, Alex loves mechanics, so he talks about that near constantly. He likes to design. I know nothing about mechanics. So I am always trying to figure out a way to story my way out of the mechanics. <laughs> so it's probably the reason we don't play together very often. <laughs> we have different kind of gaming groups. I have the one where I can act my way out of a paper bag, and, and he has ones where the rules are there for a reason. <laughs> and that's what I love about the game, is that both of those are incredibly valid ways to play. It's, that's mm-hmm. honestly the other thing that really draws me to... Uh, this as as a hobby and more when it comes down to like a balance between the two because i usually end up thinking about this as indeed like a dance between the idea of storytelling and the idea of uh of the mechanics of a system um where do you like to fall on that balancing act between the two definitely i fall more in the narrative side of things the storytelling side of things i think that the mechanics are a great groundwork you know or a framework rather for what we're trying to do and it gives you parameters to work within but i if i have to sometimes step out of those parameters in honor of a really cool story Mm -hmm. then i'm totally prepared to do that and it's one of those things that you talk about you know before you start playing with people is like this is the kind of game that i run this is the kind of dm that i am so if that you know jives with you then we're gonna have an awesome time if it doesn't jive with you and you're more mechanics heavy then this probably isn't the game for you and it's worked out so far yeah like when i started out and uh we we started the show we we had kind of started it with the idea that i didn't know what i was doing and alex was going to explain what i did (laughs) and (laughs) um and and that worked out well now that i actually have been starting to actually play in games and have seen different systems I find that I get into this habit, and I don't know if you've experienced this yourself, but I get into this habit where you present me with a new system. My immediate thought is, well, I'm going to come up with a character that I really enjoy playing, and I'm going to look at this in a narrative fashion. And as I get more used to the system, I start looking at it in more mechanical fashion, and then start thinking about how I can use those mechanics to actually play the game more than the narrative part. It seems to be like a transition for me between wanting to play in a purely narrative fashion and then getting so used to the system that it's like oh but i could really utilize the system in these interesting ways do you, have you felt that way or do, was your experience different um i don't i don't think i have like a hard conversion point like that okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's more that like i'll create like when i'm playing which i, I don't do very often anymore but when i do make a character um i look at okay what's this character going to be who do i want to play yeah. And, you know, I start from there and I'll I'll use the mechanics to help me build who I'm trying to play. So I'm always cognizant of the mechanics and how they can uh, either benefit or harm what I'm trying to do. Right. Uh, so I guess they're technically always in my mind, but not to the extent that I'm going to allow them to to make me play a, a, a character I don't want to play. Right. Right. Yeah. You uh, you do a lot of like the, the GMing DMing duties now, don't you? Yeah, um, I, I have a home game that we play maybe once a month uh, because, mm-hmm. you know, the age old problem of scheduling. Yes. So all the, the weekly and biweekly stuff I do, I'm, I'm definitely running the, uh, the, the DM screen on those. Do you find like I once I once attempted to be a GM. I say attempted because I probably will never try it again. <laughs> but, and, and I only did it because they, they hired me to do a thing. <laughs> And they thought it would be great if somebody who's never done it before actually did it. So I was like, all right, I'm up for the challenge. Um, 
do you do you find yourself a little bit pigeonholed by that? I like me personally when I got a hold of it, I was thinking to myself, "Oh wow, this is a lot of pressure. I hope I don't just be I hope this is not like my role for the rest of my role playing experience. <laughs> um no, I wouldn't say I feel pigeonholed by it. Um I know if I wanted to desperately play in a game that I I could find one. It's yeah. just it's a time thing for me. Uh, I don't I look at my schedule. I'm like, I would love to have like a regular game that I get to play in. But time wise, I, I just don't think it would work. What I like about, you know, the difference between DMing and, and playing is as a player, I love bringing one character to life, really investing in their story and their background and and yeah. re- literally just breathing life into them. Mm-hmm. But as a DM, I get to do that to all, an entire world. And mm-hmm. while that is sometimes daunting. Yeah. And sometimes trying to remember <laughs> Every little thing about every NPC that I've ever mentioned ever right. uh, is difficult because I take really, really crappy notes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I still have a lot of fun uh, almost like thinking my way out of the situations I put myself in because I'm a shitty note taker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? That's fair. <laughs> I, I I usually forget something. I, I like try to take good notes, and then I realize that I've forgotten really important details later. Oh, it's like the best puzzle game ever because oh, yeah. especially when you're when you're streaming the game in front of an audience mm-hmm. and <laughs> it's what it's <laughs> what did I write? <laughs> well, it's one thing when you're when you're playing with your play, you know, uh, players at your home game and you you might like gloss over something or like mention an incorrect uh thing yeah. and your players probably don't notice because they're deep in thought or deep in whatever's going on but when you have an audience who's been watching every episode <laughs> yeah. they're going to they're going to point that shit right out and oh, then you, yeah. then you have the opportunity to think really quickly Okay, mm-hmm. how do I retcon what I just said and make it make sense? <laughs> it's always fun when you create the puzzle and then everybody gets to tell you what you got wrong about your own puzzle. <laughs> yeah, and then you get to solve it. It's it's like yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. It it really is the best puzzle game ever. Uh, the second that you start building a world, it's like I'm going to build the world. It's like, "Oh, good. Well, I'm going to call you out on everything you do in that world if you're not careful." Oh yeah. Be careful, folks. Or don't. I mean, or, or be, very <laughs> yeah, or be very good at improv. Yeah, or be very good at improv. Or just say the whole thing is wibbly wobbly, and you just go with it. Or in, in, introduce time time travel, and then you, you can just do time. everything you fucked up. Yeah, you just introduce time travel, space and time, and put in a multiverse, and before you know it, you have solved every problem that you can encounter. Yeah, I'd be like, oh no, that happened in the other universe. You guys shifted. You didn't know. That's the six two six. They we're in the ultimate right now. Got to keep that clean. Yeah, and if you question me again, you're going to Battle World. You're going to Battle World, right? Until <laughs> until all of the multiverses merge back into one universe, we're going to just keep this <laughs> intact so that y'all know. But that will be a story point down the road. Yeah, no, I I do really enjoy that puzzle. But I think I botched it so badly the first time I tried this that uh, I haven't had to worry about it again, and I've actually gotten to be a player. I was not really a player before, and I really hadn't been. I, like, skipped right ahead to GM, and at which point, like, everybody I knew was like, well, I know what you're doing from now on, Nathan. <laughs> like, no, I, I think I officially screwed it so bad. That I will never be asked to do it again, and you know what? That's fine. I can play singular characters, and that's that's fun to play around with too. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not for everyone. Um, you know, like when when we started our home game, uh, one of one of my players who who's been one of my players since I started DMing, uh, she really wanted to try her hand at at running the table, and I was ecstatic for her. I was like, "Yes, absolutely, you run the show. I will be thrilled to play in that game." Yeah. And I remember after the first session or not even it did. No, it didn't even end. It was like halfway through. She looked at me. She's like, I'm seeing this in a whole new light. I don't know how the hell you do this. I don't know how you remember everything that you remember and keep track of all the things you keep track of. This is yeah. insane. I said, yes, this is also your first time and you'll get the hang of it. It, it yeah. gets easier. The first time is terrifying. Yeah. And you pick over every little mistake you make. And then you realize eventually after a few sessions that. Yeah, you might have made a few mistakes, but nobody noticed or cared because they're having a great time. Right. I And I think that my advice that I I give now is definitely be a player before you try to do that. It, it The odd circumstances that kind of like thrust me immediately into running from really having not had a lot of play experience was probably not a great thing. Like now as a player, when I'm playing a character, 
I find myself getting deeper and deeper into the backstory and the lore for them specifically, and it feels like I'm almost accidentally trying to world build, even though I am not the GM, which is <laughs> which is a dangerous trap to be in, I'm aware, but was she ever uh able to go back, try it again after that? Oh time? yeah, no, that her 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 game is the the one where we play like pretty much like monthly or bi weekly, just depending oh, on scheduling. Okay. Yeah, uh, so yeah. it's it's still going on now. Oh good. So it, it didn't it didn't terrify her so much that she got scared off of it. No, I would I would never let it terrify her to that point. I would sit, I would rather sit with her all night and hash it out and you know help her figure it out than let that happen because Yeah. You know, I, I think so that honestly anyone maybe not anyone, you know, because there are people who just don't want to and that's fair and that's totally Oh yeah. You know, that's fine. Yeah. But anybody that really wants to run a game, I think can uh, it's just on, on, honestly a lot of it's getting out of your own head and just playing the game and making sure that the players that you have are understanding, especially when you're new, that you're going to screw up a rule and you're going to mess up and be patient with you, you know, and, and do that. And, you know, it's it's been helpful because a lot of the players that we have are new as well. Oh, that's good. Uh, out of the six of us, there's three veteran players and three people who are brand new. You know, I, I got permission from the table to be able to help them with rules and stuff like that that they might not have understood or or whatever. So, you know, if someone doesn't know what to do, I'm able to pipe in and it's not an overbearing thing, you know. And, and it's been really helpful for, you know, because the, our DM doesn't know all the intricacies at this point yet. And that's totally fine because we're just backing each other up and it's it's a really cool experience honestly yeah yeah no that's always good i think it's always nice to have a good mixture of players from different experience levels because everybody sees it in a different light everybody can see a system differently depending on how familiar they are with it and it's not good or bad like a lot of times uh just from like being on the show uh one of the best things is that not being familiar with a, a specific system like D D, uh i would ask what might be considered a stupid question but then when you actually think about it you kind of go oh hmm yeah i guess we never bothered to ask that question <laughs> it's probably good <laughs> that we address that why do you have hit points oh yeah why do we have hit points <laughs> i don't think we ever really explained that so i i actually think that it's really beneficial to be able to get wide-eyed innocence into your uh, system even if you're developing something new yeah, and the important thing is, is it's important that the people who are veterans have patience for those who are not. And remember that we all had to learn this game at one point or another, and we all learn at, at varying rates, depending on, you know, who we have helping to mentor us or, you know, if we're just figuring it all out on our own. So, you know, yeah. always making sure to just have that patience with people because yeah. some people lack it and that's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, and you're not uh, automatically going to be familiar with any system. I mean, I thought that it was really important that I at least be pretty familiar with D&D &D because that's the 800-pound gorilla in the room. So if you don't really understand that, you're probably not going to have a good frame of reference for a lot of RPGs. Being able to see so many uh, really shows you just the, the breadth of what the, the tabletop industry has to offer it feels like it's bigger now than it ever has been i don't know if you've experienced that yourself if if you are you familiar with mostly D D, or have you seen some of the other systems that are out there um i've, I've dabbled in the uh, star wars fantasy flight okay dabbled a little bit with vampire not 5e but the previous edition mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i used to uh dm a game of dread uh, a dread game which <laughs> oh yes dread fun, funny story about that whole deal i i got <laughs> asked out of the blue they, their DM had dropped out three days before they were doing, I think it was a charity thing. I forget exactly. This was a while ago. Mm -hmm. But they really needed somebody. They knew I ran a game. And, and they're like, hey, would you mind running this? I'm like, I don't know. This is, And this was the first new system I ever learned. Before that, it was just D&D. &D. So I don't know. That seems terrifying. I've got three days. And really, I can only dedicate like one night to actually learning this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got to come up with a story. I I, uh, I don't know. And the more I thought about it, the more I was like, you know what? To hell with it. Worst that'll happen is I suck really bad and I never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> what could go wrong? So, I, you know, I did, I did a trial by fire on that and yeah. it was a little rough, but I had a lot of fun doing it. And, sure. you know, I, I would love to spend time learning all sorts of systems. Like I want to learn the uh, Game of Thrones one. It's it's a Song of Ice and Fire oh, okay. uh, tabletop. I really want to learn that system. And uh my my partner in in Soul Bear uh, Quinn has the mm -hmm. books and really wants to kind of dabble with it as well. 
but again for me i look at it as just a time issue i don't i don't know how much time i have to to learn a bunch of new games and new systems as much as i would absolutely love to so yeah what i propose is uh, people donate a whole bunch to Soul Bear RPG accounts so I can quit my day job and spend more yes. time learning to play more games and provide more quality entertainment for you. There you go. Yeah, you've heard it here first. That is how we are going to get Sugar Bear to be able to, uh, you know, play a bunch of different games. He needs to have the time to do it. First, you need to have the money. Then you get the time. Then you get the power. Isn't that how this... No, wait, that's not how that works. Sorry. Um, that's not the speech <laughs> from Scarface. What am I thinking? I've seen a lot of systems, and actually right now I'm even playing in some that I'm completely unfamiliar with, uh, so, so that's fun and terrifying. But the, the D&D game that I'm playing in right now, which again, I was pretty, uh, I was pretty lackluster at to begin with, because I was like, I don't know what half these mechanics do. Luckily, the, the person that's running it uh, is experienced, not necessarily in Dungeons & Dragons, but is a uh, game designer himself. And so, if nothing else, is very familiar with how mechanics work, and we actually have a team that is made up of people that are actually experienced in the gaming community, who actually, like, work in the gaming community, <laughs> uh, like, for their jobs. Uh, and then there's me. But uh, <laughs> in, ter in terms of uh, their experiences, though, we have, like, people who do copy editing for RPGs, people who are, you know, on, on the boards of different RPG companies, people who work on mechanics pro bono and, and uh, as freelancers. And even, even with the level of experience that they have in role-playing, uh, they all kind of have different levels of experience when it comes to D&D specifically. So we're all kind of on this journey together, and it's nice that, you know, we do still have a DM that will be able to ask some of the more seasoned players who have been playing D&D for like 20 years, do you understand what this role is? <laughs> and we'll go and look it up. But I guess that's kind of like the covenant that players and, and, you know, the person running the game has to make at the beginning, that you're going to have that relationship. Absolutely. What is it that I wanted to ask you? I'm sure there was something I wanted to ask you. It probably had to do with Bulbasaur. Oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. How, how, how Bulbasaur is trash? Yeah, that, no, that's yeah. That's what you want to bring up? Yeah. <clears throat> I totally agree. I, I completely 100% agree that Bulbasaur is the okay. trash starter Pokemon. Oh, okay, okay. See, the thing about that is um, you're, you're <laughs> wrong, and I, <laughs> but I'm okay with you being wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with you being wrong. I only say that because, you know, if you, re if you remember from the original Red and Blue, the first two trainers that you have to go up against are Misty and Brock, and Bulbasaur kicks ass against Rock and Water Pokemon. But that's not the point. Yeah, but, but, but you know what's, what makes you a really strong trainer? Mm -hmm. Attacking that shit with a, a Charmander. That, that's a really strong train. A, a strong trainer can beat Brock and Misty with a fire Pokemon. Uh, okay. Uh, you don't have to rely on the weaknesses of the other trainers. Yeah, I get that. But then, like, if you remember the anime, also, uh, when it gets to a Charizard state, it's just going to burn you alive half the time. Yeah, that's my life, though. I'm used to that. So, okay, that, but... like, I'm totally good. I've got, I've got four cats. You think I'm not used to my, my fucking animals being a dickhead? <laughs> fair, fair enough. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's a Pokemon that doesn't listen. Yeah, I've got four of those at home. I... I have this natural inclination every time I pick up a Pokemon game is to is to pick the grass starter. I don't know why. It is like inherent for me. I pick the grass Pokemon. I mean, it's a real problem because you're picking the worst element. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, can we meet in the middle and just say Squirtle was pretty great? Like, could we... Squirtle was the most rad when he was wearing sunglasses and part of the Squirtle squad. When he was part of the Squirtle squad, yeah. The Squirtle squad uh, rules, and uh, they should be. They should have like their own bike gang. I feel like that was a missed opportunity. Also, he evolves into a giant tortoise with a can with cannons shooting out of its shell. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. What does yeah. uh, Bulbasaur turn into? Oh, a, a big dinosaur with a dumb flower on his back. It's like a poisonous flower, though. And he's oh, got the little vines. Poison. He's got, like, the vines that come out from the sides. So that's he, he's a fucking giant dinosaur with a flower on his back that's into S&M. That's fine. <laughs> you know, my thing. <laughs> you sure. Know, he's, 
<laughs> you know what? That's his lifestyle, and I'm going to let him have it. We're yeah, not I'm not trying to, to kink shame. I'm not going to shame all. Bulbasaur for what he likes. And he likes himself. I mean, look at all those age spots. Well, okay, the age spots do concern me a little bit, but but you <laughs> like, know, get that shit checked out by a doctor. You could have melanoma. You're spending all your time absorbing the sun and shit. Like, come on. <laughs> well, like, okay, I get it. I like I like Fire Dragon. Okay, Fire Dragon, cool. But yeah, right. But plant dinosaur. I mean, dinosaur. Okay. Well, here's the thing, though. Yeah. If I had my choice between a dinosaur and a flying dragon. I'm going flying. Dra- oh, sorry. And flying dragon that shoots fire out of its mouth. Yeah, I'm going to go with that every time. Because guess what? You're basically uh, Venusaur is this big lawn. And yes. Charizard's about to fly over that bitch and mow it. <laughs> okay. All right. That's fair. All right. I'll give you. <laughs> Listen, I live in San Diego and I watch trees burn down all the time. It's like a yearly <laughs> tradition here for right. our city to be on fire. So I'm pretty sure I know what fire is going to do to a giant land mass of grass. I can understand that. It's just for some reason, every time that I would see, like, the fire starter for the Pokemon, I was like, I don't know. It feels like I'm going to burn down half the town when I take that, and I don't (laughs) want to do that. (laughs) There are some misses. I will give you that. There are a lot of fire Pokemon misses, and I will say uh, the most recent being Litten. Okay. Garbage Pokemon. Yeah. I really regret choosing Litten as a starter. I'm ashamed of myself, and you can all be ashamed at me, too. That's fine. I accept it. In fairness, though, there have been some pretty terrible starting Pokemon for all the d- three different basic types. Like, if I remember correctly, there were some for uh, water types that are kind of sad. <laughs> like, wasn't there one that was the seal? Was Poplio one of the starting Pokemon? I can't was, remember. Were they? I don't uh, know. I know one of the more recent ones. Uh, oh, God, what was the one? It was an otter. Oh, oh. I'm like, you're too adorable. Like, I can't put you into battle. Like, this is wrong. <laughs> the one that they're going to have for Sword and Shield is Sobble. I don't know why they're calling him I, that. So, so I don't <laughs> want to talk about sad. those starters because I'm disappointed with every single one of them. <laughs> yeah. I'm almost going to, like, I'm of the mind where, like, yo, Professor, whatever your name's going to be. How about yeah. I leave these three with you and I go and tackle a Pidgey outside and I'll start with <laughs> <laughs> yeah just get where's my rattatas i need one of yeah. these going on in here i'm just gonna leave a trash bag out and then just ambush a rattata it'll be fine <laughs> yeah. it's great yeah i'm still playing pokemon go for some reason and I, th- there's always this fun part where you get to like a pokestop and you look around and you're like oh it's all the shit pokemon today <laughs> it's just <laughs> weedles and caterpies at and least weedle rattatas. turns into beedrill and drill has got two drills for arms, so let's not discount Beedrill. That's pretty great. Yeah, Rattata just turns into a larger, angrier version of itself. Right? That was yeah. such a misstep. Oh, I'm Raticate. Look at me. I am a rat that gained 600 pounds, and I bite real hard. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to fucking push you over with my giant dragon lizard. And then they created, like, the Alola version where it's a dart, and it's just, like, it's the pudgiest Raticate you will ever see. It's oh, like... I know. Its cheeks are so big. And listen, I'm not trying to fat shame. I'm a big boy. No. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, oh, I'm a I big boy. Me too. I, yeah. I love big people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Raticate, listen. We got we got to talk. I'm worried about your cholesterol, mm. and I think it's important that you know maybe you do a, a quick juice cleanse just for like a week, just for a week. You I'm know, just concerned that you can't walk. Radicates don't have a particularly healthy lifestyle in general. It just looks like the ones <laughs> that are in the Alola region also have this problem where there's so much great tropical fruit. They're just yeah. they're just eating too much. And well, you know, have you seen their feet? I probably have, but I don't remember what they look like now. You're right, because their fat rolls just hang <laughs> over their feet. You you actually have not seen their feet. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Okay. And that's, that's, that's my concern. That's my worry. Yes, you should be able to see your feet. I think that that's a general life goal for me, is that one day I'll see my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I can see, like, the tips of my toes, so I'm still okay. Hey, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> life goals. <laughs> there we go. Being able to see my feet when I'm standing up. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> Hashtag life goals, everybody. Yeah, no, the Alola forms of a lot of those Pokemon were just kind of weird. I didn't even understand what happened to Execute. Why did it turn into a palm tree? I don't know. You know, you know which Alola Pokemon was amazing? Which one? Vulpix. Vulpix. <gasps> oh, didn't it, it change to an ice type? Yeah. Didn't it? That was cool. I like the uh, uh, Sand Slash, too. Yeah. That mm-hmm. changed. Same. Them. Like, yeah, yeah. They did some nice jobs with, uh, with actually changing those up. Sorry, Execute. I can't get behind. I can't even see your damn head. Here's the big question. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. We okay. know we know that you you enjoy the trash starter and I enjoy the best starter. But yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't go, let it go. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> what did you want to say? Out of every single Pokemon ever made, which is the best? Out of every single Pokemon ever made, which is the best? There's only one right answer. So good luck. Um, Mewtwo. That is the wrong answer. <laughs> okay. But what it's is... still a good answer. Mewtwo's a strong answer. I will give you that. It's not the right answer, but it's a good answer. Okay. Okay. So we all know... That it is the ninja bug with two sword arms. That's okay. right. Yeah. My main the Scyther. Oh, the Scyther. Scyther's mm-hmm. a good Pokemon. Scyther's Not the strongest Pokemon, Pokemon by nope. far. Pretty weak, actually. Mm. But on a cool level, like, oh, yeah. come on. It's a nin- giant ninja praying mantis with sword arms. It's a good design. And he screams. He screeches really bad. It's, it's, it's pretty awful. Yeah, his voice. yeah, yeah. You don't want to deal with that. See, for me... Uh, like, in terms of design, I don't know, like, Machamp, I like the idea of, like, just a giant fighting Pokemon with four arms. I yeah. don't, that, that's just pretty great. It's like the, 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 you know, kids version of, of Goro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, let's face it, one of them took inspiration from the other. I don't know which one. <laughs> if, if Goro had a snake head. If Goro has a snake head, exactly. And, you know, who doesn't want a snake head? Or, or, you know, Snorlax, just because Snorlax doesn't have to give a shit. Uh, you anything. know what? Snorlax is my spirit animal. Like, yeah. <laughs> you mean, I, you mean I there's a Pokemon Snorlax. that... <laughs> right? I, I feel seen. Like, you're telling me there's a Pokemon that just lays wherever it wants, sleeps as much as it wants. And, and no one can move it. <laughs> no one yeah. can move it. <laughs> and no one can do a damn thing. And you, yeah. you play some music for it and it'll roll over? Yeah, okay, that's yeah. me if I was a Pokemon. Exactly. I think that Snorlax is actually my spirit pillow. I want, so I just want to just be a giant pillow. Yeah, the only problem is is you you lay on Snorlax, right? And yeah. your phone, your ringtone goes off. Snorlax rolls over. Now you're a pancake. Yeah, now you're dead. So that's the, the biggest hazard in Pokemon is uh, rolling Snorlaxes. You can't uh, you can't yeah. deal with that. Yeah, it's good to know. No, worst Pokemon though. Ooh, there, um, there's a hard one. No, it's not. It's I forget its name, but it's the one that's literally a set of keys. Oh, <laughs> Unown? No, 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 no. Oh no! It's 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 got a name like Key something or or oh. whatever. Oh, okay. Gonna bug me. <laughs> but it it looks like it just literally is a floating set of keys. I think I saw them oh, in God. I want to say Pokemon X. Oh, okay. okay. I'm, I'm pulling up the name because it's gonna make me crazy. But I know everybody hates this Pokemon. Nobody likes this Pokemon. There's a handful that people don't like. Well, it's like they ran out of shit, so they like started looking around their desk. <laughs> yeah. It was like, oh, oh yeah. Klefki, that's what it is, Klefki. Oh, Klefki, okay. Yeah, it yeah. is pretty bad when you have to start, like, looking around, like, for office supplies that you can turn into Pokemon. <laughs> Here's a stapler. Let's turn that into yeah. a Pokemon. That'd be great. It's um, Staporo. Yeah. But sure. now, oh, but now here's a, here's a better question for you. What is the worst Pokemon of the original 150? Ooh. Mm. Ooh. I have uh, an idea in my head, but oh man, okay. Let me, let me think this through because I've got there's a couple that immediately come to mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vol- Voltorb's the first one that just immediately comes to mind. But you know what? I think I I, I like bobber. less than Voltorb. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What? Electabuzz. Really? Okay. No. Nope. Nope. Wrong answer. Okay. It is the arch nemesis of Scyther, of course, Pinsir. Oh. Okay. Okay. I hate Pinsir because it, it looks like a giant earwig, and earwigs skeeve me out. So okay, so Pinsir. Okay, see, I I would go with Muck because it doesn't really look like literally anything. It looks like literally a, just something fell on the floor and got a face. See, oh come me, on, you just described Ditto. Well, okay, but at least Ditto can go beyond that. It can be whatever it wants. Muck Fair. is always going to be Muck. You, you know what Muck looks like. <laughs> yes. No, so, no, no, no. You, uh, you, you don't know where I'm going with this. I can okay. promise you. Okay. Uh, to to me, it. like when you mentioned Muck, the reason mm-hmm. why Ditto popped in my head so immediately was mm-hmm. uh, Muck looks like a, a Ditto that just sweats a whole lot. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. It's, it's taking too much time in a sauna. <laughs> <laughs> Here's something that I was thinking about earlier, and I was like, I don't know, even know if we're going to have a point where we get into this conversation, but I feel like it's it's justified now. If you were to give, <laughs> if you were to give like D and D character classes to Pokemon, 
Who who would be a barbarian? Who would be a cleric? Who would be a bard? Okay, this this should be pretty easy. Okay. Uh, bard, clearly Jigglypuff. Okay. Yep. Good. I think I think we can all agree on that. Um I'm gonna go uh let's see, rogue, scyther, of course. That makes sense. Yep. Okay. Uh Barbarian Kangaskhan. Oh yeah. That makes sense. Let's see, Ranger. Ra- Ooh, Ranger. That's, that's a tough one. Uh Beedrill? Doesn't Beedrill have like yeah. a ranged attack? Pin missile, I, I get, yeah. Yeah. Pin missile. The closest thing I can think yeah, of. Yeah. I, I don't I don't know that I like Beedrill for that though. Mm. I think I'm I'm thinking more like uh God, there was somebody that was just in my head, but I lost it. I'll come back to Ranger. I'll come okay. back to Ranger. Warlock, definitely Haunter. Oh yeah, okay. Uh we'll say Paladin. Ooh, Paladin. Oh boy. I know Cleric Cleric's Chansey, for sure. Cleric's Chansey. Okay, that makes sense. Paladin. Oh, Paladin, that's a tough one. Dragonite? For some reason. Or Mew. Ooh, Dragonite. I think, no, I like Dragonite for that. Dragonite, yeah. yeah. My first instinct, I should have gone Nailed it. Okay, it's good. good. So we have Paladin. Uh, still haven't quite uh, figured out Ranger. Okay, that's fine. And we need Wizard, wiz- wizard and Sorcerer. I'd say Wizard and Sorcerer are going to be Mew and Mewtwo. That makes sense. Because they're so, they're so similar. But, you know, yeah. one's just slightly more powerful than the other. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. They're both they're both OP as hell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now the so, now the question though is which one is wizard, which one is <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that. <laughs> well, uh, too bad. <laughs> I, I would say we'll say wizard's the more powerful, so it has to be Mew by a hair because okay. Mew was the original and mm-hmm. Wizard is the original. So And and uh Sorcerer, yeah. Well because yeah, sorcerers usually have kind of like a chip on their shoulder anyway, so that kind of says Mew too, right? Exactly. Yeah, feels like. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay, so what are we down to? We need so back to, to Ranger. We need to get Ranger. Oh, we need to get Druid. We oh, Druid to... and Fighter. Well, <gasps> oh, Druid is Ditto. Druid. Okay, Druid is Ditto. Oh yeah, because Wild Shape. Yep. 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 Okay. Because cool. that was easy. Yeah, that was super easy. <laughs> okay, so so that just leaves us. Okay, that leaves us with Fight. Well, Fighter. Wouldn't that have to be one of the fighting classes of Pokemon? That would have to be yeah, like. I, I honestly like my my first instinct is Machamp. Hitmonchan. Hitmonchan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That might have to be it. Oh, but we have Monk. One of them hand to hand combat. Oh, you're right. Monk. Okay. Hitmonchan for, for Monk. Hitmonchan for Monk. Okay. Who would you have for Fighter? Who actually has. Uh, oh. I, I, I think Machamp is the one for Fighter. Yeah, I guess so. I guess it's gonna well, have Machamp to go. could go Barbarian, though, but I like Hingus Khan better for, for Barbarian. Yeah, I guess if we were just picking one for each category, that would probably be it. For some reason, I got a thought in my head, like, okay, if I have Fighter, they're probably going to have to be holding something. And then I thought about, um, oh, what was the bird that always had the leak in Far-fetched. its hand? Farfetched. Far-fetched. <laughs> I was just like, but I don't know if Farfetched really falls into any category. It's just kind of there with a leak. <laughs> I don't know if it really works for any of that. Okay, but I think we have pretty much everyone down, but, uh, damn, back to that Ranger. ranger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Pikachu. No. Pikachu could be. <laughs> no. Okay. Fine. Oh man, but I I was kind of thinking maybe um. <laughs> God, for rain. Why is this one so difficult? Okay, so you know what? We're maybe we're thinking about this all wrong. Okay. So we're thinking okay. about Ranger. Traditional Ranger uses a bow, right? But right. Rangers also can be dual wielding Rangers just as okay. easily. Okay. Okay. Yep. 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 Okay. Okay. And okay, so a ranger can do. Are there any Pokemon that like have companion Pokemon from the original 150? Because I can't. Um. Well, the only thing I can think of is actually Kangaskhan because it would have the little Kangaskhan in its pouch. Yeah. Right. So I guess we'll have to go Hunter Ranger then because we already mm, used Kangaskhan for the purple. Yeah, we already thing. used it for the Barbarian. Right. Uh, a Lapras. Wait. No. 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 Cloister. Maybe Cloister. Because doesn't Cloyster have, like, a ranged attack? Like, it, all the spines on its shell can, like, shoot off in all directions? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it can do it can do attacks like that. I haven't even think, I didn't even think about any of the water Pokemon. Like, oh the my God. water Pokemon feel like they're almost ranged. Like, I feel like, actually, Blastoise would actually be a pretty good ranger. It's got ranged He's too cannons. bulky, though. Squirtle. Squirtle's a ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Just gotta put the glasses on. Gotta have the glasses. And then it can be a ranger. You know what? Okay, I I, I know exactly what we do for this. Okay. Okay, you so doing? you know you know how uh, everyone kind of shits on the ranger in D&D? It says, like, you know, they're kind of a worthless, useless class, right? Slowpoke. 
Not even slow king or slow no. bro. We're going slow poke. Slow poke. <laughs> I have to say though, like I have a ranger in my party. They are 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 not bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I play my a ranger is my first character I ever leveled to twenty. I love rangers. We have we have a ranger that somehow ends up like killing everything that it, that he comes across because uh, we ended up with like huge creatures and he has colossus slayer and so he would he would keep doing hunter's mark colossus slayer and then somehow during a, an incident um, where I happened to grab something from a police station evidence locker before we ended up escaping a town after setting the whole place on fire um i, I hope sounds it, like D. yep pretty much <laughs> it's one of those things where like we're pro trying to play by the rules and trying to be good and then we realize that they're torturing one of the npcs that's with us and it's like screw it <laughs> just rip open a wall <laughs> throw fire all over the place we're good but we we all took like a little thing out of the the evidence locker as we're going through and i open it up and I'm playing this giant turtle monk. It, it, he's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, so he's just a giant glowing turtle monk. Uh, but he takes, <laughs> he takes out this thing, and they're like, it's a set of gloves that are way too small for you. <laughs> and I'm like, well, this was a great thing. And so at some point, they're like, you know, if you're going to go and identify these, these cool new scimitars that you got from this, this Git Yankee, uh, you, while you're doing that, maybe you should check out that glove, those gloves and see what they do. And so I, I get those identified, and um, Dom, or, or uh, DM, goes, uh, yeah, no, those gloves are magical. And what they do, <laughs> and I, when he said this, I was like, really? It's like, uh, so, so what they do is uh, any number above and beyond uh, when you're rolling to see if you hit, uh, any number above and beyond what the, uh, what the uh, AC level of that creature is gets added to damage when you do your damage Whoa. roll. And I was like, what <laughs> and if you're wearing the gloves but they're too small for me to wear and so uh we decided you know what uh our ranger jonathan walker our, ra our ranger here why don't you take this because you usually roll like 28s for hit so so you take it and before you know it he was like wow all right, this is awesome. <laughs> do, I am doing so much damage. One bolt from an arrow, from like the special arrows he got, and it was like 38 damage, something like that. I was like, yeah, told you. <laughs> These are good gloves. You owe me. <laughs> no backseas. <laughs> These are that good. So actually, no, our ranger is pretty overbuffed at this point. <laughs> See, my mine was the opposite. Mine, like the we're in the final battle, level twenty, and yeah. I can't land a single hit. We're fighting Loth oh, and yeah. and Strahd, who had acquired the hand and eye of Vecna. Oh God, Strahd is just undoing anything I do, and both in character and a little bit out of character, I get super frustrated. So, uh, one of the party kill, manages to kill Strahd. Uh, my ranger struts over to him, cuts the eye of Vecna out. Or yeah, takes the eye of Vecna out. No, <laughs> sorry, the monk grabbed the eye out of him. Perfect. My character cut his own eye out mm. on his turn, got the eye from the monk, and popped that some bitch in to disintegrate Lol. <laughs> my my character was underpowered, but he got points for tenacity. Right. <laughs> well, you know the ironic thing is that when uh when Alex originally tried to show me D and D back when three point five was the system of the day, um the the character that I rolled up was a ranger. Because I was like, oh, this seems like a character for me. And I ended up with, like, a strength rating that made me a really burly ranger. <laughs> and then we, we got into a dungeon. Or he, he started us out, like, right into the fray. And he was like, yeah, we're just going to start at the crypt. You go into the crypt and we're going to start battles there. Um, we had the one session we never reconvened. As far as I know, my ranger died in that crypt because we never got back to him. <laughs> so wasn't for lack of ability, but it was for lack of actually being able to finish his storyline. <laughs> but see, now I have such an affinity for monks. Because it's like, then I, oh, then no, I start you're playing. one of those. I'm one of the monks. <laughs> I like Bulbasaur, <laughs> and I like monks. <laughs> That's who I am. <laughs> my, my two least favorite things. So uh, one, of the, one of the players in my Taldora game, mm. he, since day one, has been all about monks. Mm. And every time he tries to play a different class, he ends up being like, I just want to die so I can play a monk again. And like, I totally respect the hell out of that. Like, yeah. the guy knows what he wants, what he likes. Bless his heart. 
Mm-hmm. I hate monks as a DM though. Really? What what uh, is it about what is it about that for a DM? Because they can do everything. <laughs> That's why I like them. They're like, so versatile. Like, oh, you everyone's falling off of a tower. Oh, I'm a monk, not me. I just float. <laughs> Slow fall, baby. Okay, yeah. well, here's a hundred foot cliff everyone has to scale. Not me, I just walk right up. <laughs> I love the fact that like, because <laughs> I'm I'm only level six right now, but I still, but like by the time I got to level six and I'm a shadow monk, it means that I could shadow step. <laughs> and people like I got into a thing where they were like, we were gonna set up these traps and we're gonna like lure a bunch of orcs in there. And I happened to ask like, hey, what's the um, it, like what what kind of lighting is it right now? Like uh, like are we in dim light? One of the other players who have been playing with for a long time, she's like. Oh yeah, and where's the wind coming from? And how many trees are there right now? And I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm a shadow monk. It does matter to me because if I'm in low light, I can do shadow step, and and it it will be very beneficial for my character because the next thing you know is uh, like a, a shadow fell dragon comes down. And everyone's freaking out. Oh, God, we've got this giant dragon. And, uh, you know, we didn't expect that. And so my character's thought is, hey, I could shadow step onto the back of the dragon. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) So I did that. And that was fun. (laughs) And that kind of distracts the (laughs) dragon. Because now he's got a giant, like, thousand pound tortle that's on his back. (laughs) What are we going to do now? Yeah, you can't deal with this. I tried grappling it a couple times to see if I could give it hugs. It was a good oh, time. Oh, God. Yeah. No. That... <laughs> I like monks. I want to get to the higher levels so that, like, I can mitigate most of my damage and, like, never get poisoned and never age. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> monks are great. You don't even need weapons. I know. (laughs) You just use your hand. You don't need armor. You don't need armor. Your AC class is great regardless. You have an insane uh, uh, initiative role as well. Yeah. Well, see, it's a little bit nerf for me because I'm I'm not a good shadow monk. uh, So my dexterity actually sucks. My strength is good. So I'm kind of atypical. (laughs) But I I'm still I still hit pretty hard. I'm a punch turtle basically. I'm a punch turtle. Um, but yeah, no, traditionally, yeah, your initiative's great, you, you, you are able to do a whole bunch of things. Your character class, your um, archetypes are really cool, too. But yeah, and then you, then you just, like, you never age, and you just, like, get key points back all the time. Oh, that's the thing I also loved, is that you just, you just get key points back after short rests. And there How are we... so many of them to begin with, and you yes. know what, let me just say this, to mm. hell with a stunning strike. <laughs> oh, I got a story for you because I was just talking about that Shadowfell <laughs> dragon. Uh huh. If I told you that I successfully did a stunning strike on the Shadowfell dragon, oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> so like, they, Dom set this up, and it's like, yeah, this giant dragon comes down from the sky, and and we're all like, oh okay, and you know our party's getting their licks in, and all of a sudden Rembrandt's just like, you know what? While I'm attacking with my sweet new scimitars I got, one of them's going to be a stunning strike. And the dragon critically fails. <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, so that means um, that he is stunned for an entire round of combat. And Dom's like, oh, I got to look that up. What does that do? Oh, it does so much. <laughs> 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 yeah, so basically we all have advantage. Uh he can't save against dexterity throws. <laughs> he can't basically move. He can't act. He can't take actions. He can't attack. <laughs> he can only talk in in slurred speech, which is great because then my character starts taunting him and he can't respond back <laughs> because he can't talk. Oh, rubbing salt in the wound. Your it's poor DM. Really... But you know what? It's fun. For me, at least, yeah. it's fun for me. No, it is. It is. Yeah, like I, I'll, I'll rib on it a lot, and I'll, I'll talk a lot of trash. But it, it is. It's all in the name of fun. It, it is. Yeah, and it's kind of ironic because I've always heard like people that thought monks were kind of terrible, but it's not that. Well, but no, they're, they're really not. They actually get a ton of attacks and stuff. It's just that they don't really hit as hard as like a fighter or a barbarian might. But I don't know. I've gotten enough licks in at this point that um, you don't mess with the monk. You do not mess with the monk. No. No. And you don't mess with Bulbasaur. I think it's important to also mention, 
Bulbasaur ah. would absolutely be a monk in the world of the Pokemon. So no, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> no, because because all all Charmander would have to do is like back that ass up, and <laughs> the flame on the end of his tail is gonna light Bulbasaur up like a dry twig. Because Charmander is a wizard. No, Charmander would be a warlock. Warlock. He can't okay. do very many things, but the things he does, he does exceptionally well. Right. Okay. That's that's fair. And actually, coming to think about it, uh, Bulbasaur would actually be a druid. I think plant based yeah. Pokemon are usually druids. Yeah, I, I'd 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 buy that. I don't know how we got onto this topic. I probably brought it up in the first place, so I blame myself. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's fine. I blame you too. So, um, what uh, what are you working on right now? I'm just curious. Right now, just kind of steaming ahead with Taldore and Comedy of Strahd, mm -hmm. working on a new podcast concept with Carrie, uh, video game related of all things. So Ooh. kind of excited for that. Fun. I got those kinds of ideas in my head too, but. Again, it's like you gotta have the time. <laughs> yeah, and well, and that's kind of what I'm saving my time for. Is I do miss having a podcast. I really enjoy doing it, and I think something a little bit more focused and something that gives me an excuse to play a lot of video games kind of makes me happy. So, oh yeah, no, I try to use uh, like making game videos as an excuse to uh, play video games. <laughs> Alex once, like, he had a, a very grand idea for a show that he wanted to do, which I'm sure he still wants to, but it would be much more in the vein of, like, um, Welcome to Night Vale, like a long, overarching storyline that he wanted to do. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then off the cuff, he was like, hey, Nathan, um, do you have any ideas for other podcasts you'd like to do? And I was like, hey, wouldn't it be interesting if you, like, took video games and imagined, like, the power went out, and you had to turn it into a tabletop game? How would you make that? And he was like, oh, that's a pretty good idea. <laughs> and, I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I thought so. I thought it would be fun, because then you get to figure out your game mechanics. But at the same time, you get to talk about video games. And frankly, I'm all about video games. So, but again, that's like just like, you know, you have to be able to do not just the ideation, but you have to actually implement and put it yeah, that, that's where it gets tough. But, you know, I'm still confident that one day Power Surge will be a thing, even though I just kind of came up with it with no actual plan. <laughs> <laughs> but people really were like, oh, wow, that sounds cool. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I just have to get time and ability to do it. But yeah, it does sound cool. <laughs> well, that that's kind of like the, the other thing I do. So I, I started auditioning for a lot of like voice acting roles. Mm -hmm. and finally landed one so i'm I'm working on copperheart podcast oh, and cool. re recording lines and stuff like that I'm, I'm like oh i can't do multiples of these at a time like i have to let this show run its course and then you know when <laughs> when they're done with me and kick me to the curb I'll, I'll have to find something else yeah it's it's hard too like when you start doing something for a really long period of time um you you do start to ask yourself yeah but what else could i do maybe i could do something different <laughs> maybe i could try something different yeah, and it's it's a it's a real problem. I don't know because like there was a while where I literally had no free time whatsoever. Fair. And as shows begin to end and stuff like that, I it took a lot of willpower not to find something new. Right, right. But I'm so glad that I didn't find something new, and I just allowed <laughs> it to kind of dry up in certain spots to allow me to try all these other cool different things. And I'm not yeah. even done trying new things yet. Because I'm a monster and I hate myself. <laughs> yeah, I know. It is one of those things where it's like, yeah, you have like 20 good ideas. But if you can pick one, which is that going to be? And just try doing that one. <laughs> because unfettered, you'll try all 20. Oh, yeah, I'm absolutely going to try all 20. I already know it. Like my my new thing, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to try this Twitch Sings thing and, and do Twitch karaoke because why not? Oh, wow. That does sound cool. Damn it. <laughs> it, it, I watched a, a good buddy of mine. He's actually one of the players in my uh, Comedy of Strahd game, a guy yeah. named Lamar. Yeah. And he was doing it last uh, last night, and I was watching it, and I was like, oh my god, this looks like an amazing time. It, I'm sure it is. It, even just hearing about it, I was like, ooh, cool. That sounds great. Damn it. No, I can't do this, too. <laughs> so let, let me explain real quick. I know I know, we're coming to the end here, but That's it, it takes the vocal part of Rock Band, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it natively sends it to Twitch. It does score you, and then there's a lot of audience participation stuff. So you can pick like four songs that you, you'd be willing to do and let the audience vote on which one gets done. You can also duet with other people who are doing the same song. Mm -hmm. And if you match up, you sing like a part and they sing a part. You don't hear each other, which is kind of weird. 
but it all comes together really, really well for the audience. And then there's also a mechanic where uh, about halfway through the song, they will uh, put up a challenge that for the audience to vote on. And sometimes it's sing like a chicken, sing like you're Shakespearean, do jazz hands or whatever. And then for that chunk of the song, you have to do whatever it is. And then the audience can give you extra points for doing the, the challenge well. Oh, wow. It's really, really, really cool. The only thing I'd really seen, like, as the group effort for Twitch, because uh, that's that's a new one by me, was, like, Twitch Plays, when they do try, when they tried to do, like, Twitch Plays Pokemon, <laughs> and you just see everybody, oh, yeah. Yeah, everybody trying to play at the same time, and it just, it looks like I'm having a seizure. <laughs> it's, it's a disaster. I can't believe they beat it. <laughs> to think that they could even be coordinated in any stretch of the imagination is pretty incredible no it it, it boggles the mind yeah exactly oh the hive mind finally got coordinated for five seconds congratulations <laughs> now cure poverty <laughs> yeah exactly hey congratulations everybody we were able to work together to beat pokemon hey there's a few other things we could work on now right now nah. no no we're good no we're good We've we've come together. The collective worked. Now let's just retire. We're off to Boca. We're good. Yeah, we're hanging up our hat. <laughs> hanging up our hat. All the world's problems are saved. We were able to do group Pokemon. <laughs> Thanks for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah. So I'm gonna be looking forward to seeing you do co- uh, karaoke. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> if your ears don't bleed, then I've done a good job. Well, I make no promises. Um, but I do already have requests to sing Gaston from Beauty and the Beast, so you can look forward to that. He gets the best song in the movie, and on top yes. of it, Deadpool did a brilliant parody of it. Or somebody did a brilliant Deadpool parody, I should say. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think when you said that, I was like, was that in Deadpool? I don't remember. No, I'll, if you haven't seen it, I'll send you a link because it's amazing. Oh, okay, that would be handy because I, I do need to see that. And it has Deadpool in it. That's all I really care about. Ryan Reynolds should have been Gaston. Damn it. No, no. <laughs> Too charming. Yeah, he's just like, you couldn't hate him. Like, you couldn't see him as the villain. You'd no. be like, you know what? I kind of want Gaston to win. No, yeah. Because he's good at anti hero. So you, yeah. you, 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 you couldn't root against him. He would make you win. You'd be like, yeah, kill the beast. Who cares? Yeah. No, fuck that guy. Throw him off the roof. <laughs> Screw it. I don't like him. He's yeah. furry. <laughs> he's a furry. We don't want that. Yeah. Not Whoa, good. Whoa. <laughs> I'm furry. You gonna yeah. throw me off a roof uh, next to? Well, uh, well, you know. Uh, <laughs> Charizard will save you. Don't worry. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> when you really think about that character arc, probably not. Probably not. No. <laughs> that's why. That's why Bulbasaur all the way. Venusaur will catch you. I think, you know what I think. Venusaur the thing is, will be your trampoline. I, I think it's kind of like what I said before. Being a cat owner, I'm like I'm so used to the abuse that I have like Stockholm syndrome. Right. <laughs> so I just want my Pokemon to abuse me too. Okay. Well, see, that feels like a life choice. You're, you're making life choices. Is it, is it a life choice or is it trauma? Well, it can be both, right? I'm literally looking over at one of the cats right now who has climbed up to the same spot that I've kept kicking him off of for the past three days, and he's just <laughs> staring at me like, "Do something about it." He's giving you, like, the dart eyes, like, yeah. yes, I see you. I see you. Kind of a dick. <laughs> Just like Charmander. <laughs> Char- no, you know what? Here, here's the thing with Charizard. Okay. This is the way I look at this whole progression. All right. right. So All right. Ash finds this little Charmander who mm-hmm. has been abused and neglected, left out in the rain to die because that's what happens when their tail flame goes out. He, he brings it up. He raises it up. It turns into a shitty teenager. Charmeleon. <laughs> you, you know? Right. Like. Right. realistically well charmeleon has to grow up way too fast becomes charizard doesn't know how to handle that shit right. and is scarred by all the abuse and the near-death experience and despite the fact that ash was always kind to him he's just like i can't i can't do this i don't know how to people like i just don't oh, so really okay. when you think about it charizard was kind of a dick but he had his reasons it wasn't for no reason see i like the i like the character arc and like the 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 mentality that you put behind it I think that that helps flesh out the character a little bit more. What was Bulbasaur's character again? Um, Bulbasaur was happy and content most <laughs> of the time and and grew up to be a healthy, fully rounded adult when he became a Venusaur. I think that was his character arc. Huh. Yeah. Sounds like someone needed a little bit more challenge in their life to be a more interesting character, but hey, that's just me. If they were only a Squirtle... <laughs> Riding off on their Harley with on the their Harley sunglasses motorcycle. 
<laughs> so we can grow up and have the damn cannons on our back. I just want to see Squirtles of Anarchy. See that? Well, you know, now that Detective Pikachu did so well, they need more Pokemon movies. Oh my so. god, I am going to send the creators a message on Twitter and be like, listen, yeah. we just had Detective Pikachu and it was amazing and I loved it and it was adorable. Now mm-hmm. we need Squirtles of Anarchy. Let's take it darker. Let's make it gritty. Let's yeah. do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, Jigglypuff and the Holograms. I feel like that's... <laughs> Yes. No, yes. I agree. Yes. That everyone would love that. Everyone wants more Jigglypuff singing on stage and making everybody sleepy. I want to see Jigglypuff like uh judging the voice. <laughs> and just like like <laughs> hearing a voice that, that Jigglypuff doesn't like and pulling the top of the microphone off and just drawing a mustache on whoever's face it is. Yeah. Just leaping up on stage. Jigglypuff. And then you just like just start You do that really well. I'm 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 impressed. Yeah, it's kind of sad, but <laughs> no, it's amazing. I love it. Thank you. Um, if if they ever need a replacement for the Jigglypuff actor, congratulations! I'm available for VO work. <laughs> so yeah, no, I and and I can totally embody the spirit of Jigglypuff. I feel like I've been that <laughs> that misunderstood artist <laughs> most of my life. See, I look at it as, like, irrationally angry. I'm like, yeah, I've got that in spades. Yeah, yeah. I guess I always uh, saw Jigglypuff as, you know, just one of those, like, a tortured artistic type that, like, just always has, feels like he has so much to bring to the party. uh, But it's every time he tries, everybody falls asleep. And then he just gets incredibly angry that no one will stay awake long enough to listen to his damn song. (laughs) That's way better than my interpretation. I like that theory way better. Yeah, I well, it's kind of like a composer, but like nobody really understands his composition, and and then they just call him crazy. He becomes like Beethoven or Mozart, but but not in his own time. Like Jigglypuff's music will be understood, but after Jigglypuff is long gone, <laughs> it has become like a haunter. <laughs> <laughs> See, actually, Jigglypuff, it does have a very sad character arc. Yeah, no, that's like the most depressing thing. And, you know, as creators, yeah. Yeah. you know, you and I, yeah. I can't imagine a worse nightmare. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then you get to haunt the same uh, music hall that you used to try and perform in. And there's like a Jinx doing it way better. <laughs> there's a Jinx doing it way better. Or even worse, it's a ditto. And he's disguised himself as you oh. and, takes, and takes the credit for your work. While a Mr. Mime is warming up in the background. <laughs> Mr. Mime will never be able to warm up enough to make it like relevant for me. <laughs> you know what? Speaking of Mr. Mime, real quick, I yeah. know I know we keep tangenting, but That's okay. this is perfect. So Detective Pikachu was the first time anybody's ever got Mr. Mime right. Because yeah. in every single Pokemon game, Mr. Mime makes a freaking noise. But Detective Pikachu, not a single noise. Right. <laughs> not a peep. Right. It was very jarring, like, when you would see him in the original Pokemon, uh, in, in the Game Boy version, and it would go, and Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? Like, you're Mr. What? Mime, shut the fuck up. You don't even understand your character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to talk about somebody with a shitty character arc. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mime has no character arc. And the sad thing is, is that if you ever do, like, uh, occasionally I'll watch, like, uh, outside Xbox or something, and they'll do, like, the tragic backstories of different Pokemon, like, the, the, the very creepy and disturbing ones. <laughs> and if they ever get around to Mr. Mime, I can only imagine what the actual text is for the Mr. Mime <laughs> character. Because, like, what was the fake Pikachu? Uh, Mim- Mimikyu. Mimikyu's oh, yeah. storyline is really weird <laughs> and, and very creepy. You got to think back to the first depressing Pokemon, uh, Cubone. Oh, yes. Because that that was canon from Blue and Red. Yeah. The skull of its dead mother. Like, yeah. come on, that's dark. Yeah, it is, it is very, very dark. I don't think the kids, like, when they watch that stuff, they, they're thinking too much about it. But you know that, like, there's got to be kids that are growing up today that, like, they started to learn how to read, and it's like, oh, look, there's descriptions of Pokemon. I can read this now. And are traumatized for life. <laughs> because that was, like, their first exposure. Once upon a time, people were, like, starting to read with, like, Goodnight Moon. And now it's learning about Cubone wearing the skull of its dead mother. <laughs> you know what, kids? Sorry. <laughs> I think we got on enough tangents for a night. 
<laughs> uh, Brian, thank you so much for coming on. No, thank you for having me. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's great that we finally got to to do this. Um, for anyone who's uh, listening who wants to follow along with you, uh, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, the best way to find me is on Twitter at Captain Sugar Bear. That's at CPT Sugar Bear, and you can find all the links to the stuff I work on there. Beautiful. Uh, and uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter as well. I'm at Citanium. Alex is at EXP Limited, and the show's at Delph Podcast. Uh, Delphcast.com. Everything that I do, everything that Alex does, all over there. Videos, uh, uh, other things, uh, <laughs> podcasts, all of the good things are over there. And of course, thank you to our shiny little patrons, Bonnie Ainsworth and Dominic Perry. Uh, and uh, find us on all the things, the iTunes, the Spotify. The, yeah, we're on Spotify, damn it. I don't Woo! know who I'm yelling at. <laughs> Probably me. <laughs> no, I'm yelling at the ether at the moment. And you can find us all there. Rate, review. I like stars. You put five of them in the row. That's really great. They can look like star you. That's also fun. You like clicking on star you, right? Put five star of those me. in a row. Star me superior, but hey. Oh, star me's are superior. Well, yeah, I just figured that star me's don't quite look like the star. They kind of look like a star with another star behind them. But uh, yeah, if you wanted, uh, you could either give me five star me, uh, <laughs> to five, five star you's or two and a half star me's. <laughs> you can choose <laughs> which one you want to do. Doesn't matter. Either way, I make out. Uh, and again, I want to thank Captain Sugar Bear. Brian, thank you for being on. Uh, thanks again for having me. I really, really uh, had a great time, and yeah. uh, we'll have to do it again and hash out more Pokemon stuff. Oh yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll torture Alex with this next time, uh, yes. <laughs> and he he will love it. Uh, and so for all of us here at Delve, thank you for joining us, and we will see you on the next one. Bye, everybody. I am happy to let you steer the ship and just chime in with my thoughts on whatever we're talking about. Okay, that's great. Uh, note that it will probably end up being about Pokemon. I I don't know why, but it almost always ends up being about Bulbasaur. Can't tell you why, I'm just like that. Um, I mean, considering Bulbasaur is like the worst of the three starters, yeah, I don't know why either. Oh, don't, 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 don't go, don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. I, sh I should have saved that for the show. There's, there's, well, no, it's okay. We're, <laughs> we're, we'll be there soon enough. That's, that's a discussion. Okay, I'll, I'll call you out on that too. It's okay. fine. Good, good. Because yeah, no, there's, oh, mm, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those. I'm, I'm a Charmander main all my oh. life. Oh, Okay, Since we're going to have to talk days. about that in a minute. <laughs> we're going to have to bring that back up.